We're going to be covering the waterfront in this hour with a guest I've been interviewing off and on for the last 10 years. Really smart guy, author, researcher, Robert David Steele, former Marine, former CIA case officer, U.S. spy hacker, CEO of Open Source Solutions Network, robertdavidsteele.com. We're going to be talking to him in just a moment. He is the Open Source Everything Manifesto, Transparency, Truth, and Trust. We're going to be talking to him throughout the hour and about five minutes into the next hour. But before I go there, let me just hit some more of the headlines we haven't covered yet. IMF cuts world forecast for third time, Sky News. China seen posting lowest economic growth in 25 years. GDP expected to slow to 6.8. That's with their cook numbers. Talk about a state-run system. Uh, we have a list of Bernie Sanders uh, $19.6 trillion tax hikes. But, of course, all the elites will be exempt, and then he'll vote against auditing the Fed. Uh, Supreme Court agrees to hear Texas challenge to Obama's executive action on immigration. That's a big deal. GOP elites have blown $65 million on Jeb Bush and his failed campaign. He's polling about 3%. Um, Ron Paul puts out a hardcore article. He says, is the stage been set for authoritarianism in America? Davos elites are to debate rising inequity and, and, of course, to push global tax initiatives where they get the money and then distribute it to the third world, but only distribute it to companies and corporations they control. That's the inside baseball. Major snowstorm threatening D.C. and New York City. Uh, Hillary says it's global warming, so pay her to carbon taxes and she'll, she'll fix it. Continuing, Russia says they're to maintain their level of nuclear uh, restraint for national Interest, Russia's national interests dictate the need to maintain its uh, potential in nuclear systems. And they're basically not following a bunch of treaties because of uh, the increased militarization on their borders. That is just some of the news uh, on that front. Then we have distractions like the Pentagon may demote David Petraeus. Oh, my goodness, because he talked to a biographer and, and had a, something in a file cabinet. But Hillary and everybody else is just running around knowing their servers are hacked doing whatever they want, taking money from dictators to give them weapons. And, you know, the Bushes were involved in funding Al-Qaeda as well and supporting it and going back to Jimmy Carter. That's all okay, but let's, you know, how about we put Martha Stewart back in jail again for stock fraud, but nothing against Goldman Sachs or J.P. Morgan for all their derivatives. It's just ridiculous, these sacrificial lambs. Assailant chanted ISIS before beating a man in New York City. Yeah, shoot cops in the head in Philadelphia, beat people. But there's no attacks from the darling little refugees coming in, many of which are ISIS fighters. Trump says Christianity's under siege. I want to win Iowa, he said. Then they're just going to clean the table. Continuing, shocking video shows Swedish woman being harassed and groped by a gang of migrant women. We're going to play the shocking video in the next hour. Uh, woman films as she is harassed by at least two men in Sweden, grabbing on her, following her. But women are told, just don't dress sexily. It's, it's your fault by the feminist. The exact inverse of what they previously claimed. German minister urges Merkel to prepare border closures. Facebook begins Europe-wide campaign against extremist posts. Reuters, that means criticizing uh, the open borders. Muslims, practically impossible to integrate into Europe, Czech president says. Immigrants must improve English in two and a half years or face deportation, says Cameron. That's a whitewash. I'm not against all these poor folks from the destabilized Middle East. Most of them aren't radicals or terrorists. But here's the deal. They know some are going to get in. They know there's going to be more attacks. And it's being used for civil emergencies. It's being used to take our freedoms all over the Western world, period. So it's part of a globalist plan. It's part of the UN plan. And the migration head... Uh, who admittedly admits it is to balkanize Europe. You can go read Peter Sutherland's quotes in the Financial Times of London admitting it. So this is a divide-and-conquer strategy. Bring in the groups, the government becomes the totalitarian refuge, uh, referee of the whole thing with the refugees. Also, this is coming up. President Obama asserts power over waterways remember and how it ties into all the breakdown of the water systems and the all the dumping in the rivers that they claim is racism no it's anti-human behavior it's corruption it's a collapse of a rotting infrastructure the deindustrialization the aftermath of nafta and gat i mean detroit and flint are going to totally collapse people 
And no amount of bailouts are going to fix it because there is no industry. It's gone. Chicago, New York, they're falling apart. No amount of welfare will fix it. It's because this country is rotting. Obama eyes audacious use of executive power in final year. The Hill newspaper, they come out and call it audacious. They throw down the gauntlet of executive power grabs, setting the precedent further for an imperial presidency beyond Barack Obama. You Democrats that love him acting like a dictator, imagine when we get a Republican. And I'll be here opposing those tyrannical moves. I hope you'll be opposing them as well. We're going to cover the waterfront, what's happening in the Middle East, what's happening with the fact that the West is running ISIS and Al-Qaeda being unmasked. Robert David Steele has a new book out looking at were some of these latest Islamic attacks false flags. Well, they're false flags and they were brought in, protected and allowed to do it. But does it go beyond that? I, I mean, I asked the question, how could there be attacks and then the government that brings them in not get in trouble? That's a suspension of logic. Another French false flag, bloody tracks from Paris to San Bernardino, a new book out by Mr. Steele. We'll get to that at the bottom of the hour. Uh, there's so much I want to get into uh, him with the whole election, what's happening in the world, the factions. Let me ask you this, Robert. First, it's good to have you back with us. Oh, Alex, it's always a treat to be on your show. Before we you know, go over the map here, you were an actual field guy, you know, in a lot of combat operations, a lot of intelligence gathering operations all over the Middle East, all over the world. So you actually are one of those maybe five, six, seven percent of I'm wrong, correct me, of the CIA that's actually out there in the field. Uh, what do you think about 13 hours? What I mean, obviously there was a stand down. What do you think about Benghazi? And then pulling back then, who are the factions best you can tell? I mean, we know it's the army at the Pentagon against the Navy, but then the Pentagon overall against the CIA, allied with the Defense Intelligence Agency and and then another 14 agencies jockeying for who they're with, who's the NSA yes. with. I mean, I'm, I've got a lot of you know, good sources, you do too, and they say they can't even figure out who's who now, and that it's so corrupt, it's all just about looting and getting funding, and that basically we've been captured by corruption, not some foreign power, but just by the fact that every agency now is just growing like a bloated tick hanging on the near carcass of the West. Well, Alex, you're, you're, I was one of the first case officers assigned the terrorist target full time in, um, in the 1980s. And I've actually organized a false flag for the CIA. Um, I mean, I know how this is done. I know we do it. Whoa, 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 whoa. You never, oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to skip this network break. This is so incredible. First, break that down. Get into the, what, what you. Look, a, a false flag, and there are many different kinds of false flags. Mine didn't kill anybody. Uh, but a false flag is basically where you simulate a, a whole chain of events and you basically blame it on someone else. But it has a desired outcome that is in your favor, even if it has nothing to do with ethics or reality. Sure. If you can't tell us the classified false flag you carried out, can you give us a, an example of something else that happened like it? Well, how about 9-11? Uh, how about Charlie Hebdo in Paris? How about this most recent Paris event in which multiple witnesses identified white, blue-eyed paramilitary guys actually doing the shooting. San Bernardino on national television in the United States. Two different witnesses said exactly the same thing. If Alex, you and I are on the same wavelength here. I mean, I really get upset with the, with the fact that most Americans are so out of touch with reality because they get their news from mainstream media, including Rachel Maddow, who has no clue uh, what the actual unemployment rate is in the United States. And so our, our citizens are basically under-informed or misinformed. Um, but there's no question. And by the way, this, this wonderful book that, that you mentioned, this was edited by uh, Keith Barrett. And I'm one of about uh, 50 authors in there, including Ron, um, uh, Craig Roberts and uh, Phil Giraldi, two of my, two of my heroes. Um, there's no question but that San Bernardino and uh, both attacks in Paris were false flags. And they're basically doing to France what was done by NATO Gladio to Italy in the 1960s. Now, that's leaked in, in uh, Italian courts. The Italian president's gone public. They're head of their Supreme Court. That's one of the most documented false flag chains ever, other than the, the Israelis. Uh, uh, so, Alex, you're right. And so is the assassination of John F. Kennedy. It's now known that Alan Dulles 
was a massive traitor who single-handedly saved Nazism and promoted fascism in Japan and Italy and Germany, brought the Nazi Hydra to the United States, helped the Nazis move their empire to Argentina uh, and all of their gold and, and so forth. So what we have in the United States today is financial, religious, and ideological traitors. And I totally support the governor of Texas with his call for a constitutional convention. And I believe that the next president has to be elected on a platform of both committing to a constitutional convention, if we can get 34 states to ask for it right away, and also electoral reform. Sir, I want to walk through all that with you, but you've never dropped so many bombshells here. You organized a false flag. These are false flags. Uh, the Nazi gold to Argentina. A lot of that's been declassified. The public doesn't know it. Of course, they know where to hunt Hitler. They know where he was living. Uh, you know, my grandfather, you know, lived in Texas, and there were just Nazis all over the place uh, when he would go on military bases after World War II. He was angry about it because they'd shoot their mouths off, you know, and were very arrogant, and he'd had a lot of buddies die. But, but I just don't think people understand that it's not even a Nazi conspiracy. It's that it's a Nazi system of covert operations that basically was grafted in 36,000 of them as officers into academia, uh, into science, into weapons manufacturing, into uh, NASA, into everything. And that's what we see today. So, of course, we've got poison water in Flint, Michigan. Well, it's not just here. It's in, I mean, Germany has been a vassal state of the United States since World War II. And Angela Merkel is one of the people that has been funded and promoted by the United States for a very long time. And she came out of East Germany. Um, the bottom line here is we cannot trust the US government. And by the way, there's no such thing as a monolithic US government. There are, there are millions of very good people trapped in a very bad system. And you talked about Benghazi. I've got a master post at Phi Beta Iota on Benghazi and the timeline and so forth. Um, there are no fewer than seven U.S. foreign policies. And in Benghazi, what you had was a CIA operation to destabilize the entire region that Hillary Clinton was actively supporting uh, in violation of the Constitution without congressional authority. Uh, she let an ambassador die because of her irresponsibility. However, Leon Panetta is the guy who gave the no-go order. Leon Panetta is a chicken shit with no balls, and he overturned his military advisors, including the commander for Africa Com, who could have saved everybody in Benghazi. Um, for me, this was Panetta's first great act of treason. His second was the fake bin Laden attack, which killed a number of SEALs to kill a patsy that was not bin Laden, that was put into place by Pakistan as a favor to the U.S. government. And there are some tremendous journalists out there. I cannot name them right now because they told me in confidence. But we have Pakistani sources that have confirmed that the fake bin Laden was provided by them. And uh, Leon Panetta probably knew that. And, of course, it was right by their West Point. And the word I've been told by SEAL families and SEALs, and this was the week that it happened. I mean, I got really scared having this info, obviously, because it was so dangerous why well, I got it out immediately. That they had a body double there, and that's basically what happened. That's why they then sent 20-something of them in a helicopter to a non-mission. They knew they were being set up, blew it up. And, and now I've even had some of those SEAL families on the show since then. But let me tell you, it's creepy when you meet with a Navy SEAL or you meet with their family a week after it happens. We've known from the beginning what happened here. And you talk about Hillary's incompetence. Uh, as you said, though, CIA on record with the stand down. They now have this guy named Bob, the supposed section chief, you know, saying that this new uh, movie, uh, 13 Hours, is wrong about a stand down. We have the witnesses that were on the ground on the radio getting the stand down order who worked for the CIA. They were ordered and they go on Fox News with uh, Megyn Kelly and say, no, we got the order from the CIA well, not to go. It's not just the CIA, it's everybody, including Hillary Clinton. I mean, if you look at my timeline, which was developed by a whole bunch of experts, um, we basically knew seven to nine hours in advance that Benghazi was going down. And fast movers with tankers were two hours away. Uh, troops, uh, the counterterrorism uh, team in Spain were two hours away. Uh, there is no question but that weren't there jets 20 minutes away 
No, two hours. I mean, jets were about 20 of those is what I've read. I don't know because.